Hello and welcome. I'm Jake Langsley, the Pondologist. And we recently we just had another snowstorm, April 19th. There's a lot of people out there who want to do something for the birds and just don't know where to start. So I'm just going to do a quick little video here on some tips on how to uh, help these feathered threat, help our feathered friends through this tough time. First tip here was sent to me from Jeremy Boudreaux from Faribault. He had uh, shoveled out and plowed out his backyard in large areas, not just under his feeders and was just amazed the amount of birds that he's seen. I did this here this morning with uh, my snow blower to make quick work of it. Spread some seed in the area, I have different zones. There's crack corn in one area, black oil in another, white millet. Also put out a couple piles of mealworms in certain spots and suet chunks. So we'll see and I've been kind of monitoring with the binoculars to see which uh, the birds prefer. So let's get a little closer look at the area. All right, I'm now set up in the front yard facing towards my house. You can see I left, I, I didn't even plow my driveway, that's not important at this point. Plowing your yard, getting that open area for the birds. And again, like I talked about before, just getting them off the road, of walking down the gravel road and there's just flocks of fox sparrows, juncos everywhere. And I think a lot of them are actually being hit on the road. I accidentally even hit one, I break for birds, but I hit a hermit thrush the other day. And it's, sometimes you just can't control it or can't avoid it. So the more we get these birds off the road, back on this grass strip, the better. So we have our seeds scattered on the ground, the white millet, black oil, sunflower seed, and the cracked corn actually feeding a little bit more cracked corn than I usually do because of the, the many species of sparrows which are not really typically found in close up in our yard. Today I've added uh, the field sparrow and the swamp sparrow to the list along with the song sparrow. A lot of these birds, while they do eat seeds, a lot of times aren't really up underneath our feeders. Also I added rusty blackbirds. So they, uh, they're really liking the corn so I recommend if you can get some cracked corn to get that out there. For the insect species, like your bluebirds and your robins, I've been using freeze-dried mealworms. They're easy to get, relatively inexpensive. The nutritional value is not as good as real mealworms. If you can get those, great. I put my order in, I'm a little bit uh, caught off guard here like many people, and it's gonna be three days before I see them arrive here. My local areas are sold out of them. So the free freeze-dried mealworms, you can buy many times over the counter, right on the spot. So I've been spreading these out in the lawn, Hermit thrushes have really been loving them, the robins, the northern flicker, and the bluebirds. Next I'd like to talk about food and shelter combination here. We have a Triton nest box and the one thing I like about this is it has a hole on both sides for lefties and righties. So I have the nail here, the opposite side I just put a simple screw through a water bottle that I cut in half, put some mealworms, some suet chunks in there for the bluebirds. We often do this in the spring but a lot, many of us uh, bluebirders are caught off guard because our bluebirds aren't really doing any nesting activity, I haven't seen any nests being built yet. So, um, But they are still using the box last night. I witnessed five bluebirds fly into this box and, and then I could come over here, I could hear them scratching around. So they slept in there last night, thought I'd find them dead this morning. About 8.30 I came out, I could hear them scratching in there. They, uh, I didn't want to open the box to disturb them. And then I was hanging around in the yard, right around 9.30 they started to come out. 
and all of them came out, checked the box, nobody was dead, so it's great to see that they're using this wood, and I've actually found them favoring the more wood design, I think, I don't know if it's just warmer, and then this box, again, changes with the wind direction, so that prevailing northwest wind and the snowfall is not blowing right into the hole, so I really like this. Um, and today, the bluebirds, even after they've been out, they've been landing on here, going in and out, had another tip from Tony Lau who said uh, they, they had success from putting crickets and other you know, mealworms in the actual box itself. So I've, I've filled, put a couple handfuls of mealworms in here. I've noticed the bluebirds going in and out. And uh, it's just great to see that we can, a couple of these things that we can do to help uh, keep our birds safe.